hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel and in today's video like the title says i'm going to be talking about the culture shocks as you all know i recently migrated from nigeria to the united kingdom i'm currently in manchester and a lot of things have been shocking me but there are a lot of like basic things that should not be shocking me but considering the fact that i am a nigerian is shocking me that like, it's like a culture shock but if you are an international student these are some of the things that you might experience i'm not doing this video to tell you that this i'm just doing youtube video for my own before i go on i like to say thank you guys so much for 7,000 subscribers thank you for always liking my videos thank you for always sharing my videos thank you for always commenting i couldn't have done this without you guys i couldn't have gotten to this point like 7,000 people watching me in a room i feel faint but thank you guys so much can we hear that sound <laughs> yeah thank you guys so much for subscribing and if you're new here my name is balaji i am i'm not a christian content creator i know they create i cannot create content for god but i will definitely share my experience as a christian with you and also share my experience as a master student that's what i'm, I'm currently in the face of being a master student right now so that's what i'm doing and that's why are filming this video so if you want to if you like relate to my content please don't forget to like this video don't forget to leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe subscribe it's always very important i, I always like you if to be honest just like subscribe comment comment make but before you make any comments if you can you don't have anything to say you can just say oh, balaji you're looking pretty balaji you are doing well or you just just leave a comment don't don't think about it in your mind you get So my first culture shock actually started from the airport. Now, normally, I know that me, I know that they spend pounds, yeah, B. Please tell me why did I travel with dollars? Why did I travel from Nigeria to the United Kingdom with dollars? Was I expecting mana to fall from everyone in the place of pounds and I would pay my offering and then I would get pounds? <laughs> like it was so annoying getting here. And then I had to discover that I had to pay one pound to actually rent a trolley at the airport i've already been told that oh it's free in london because i wanted to be prepared and everything but they are getting here and then i was looking for one pound up and down and the people that were outside waiting for me to pick me could not come in to where the baggage claim was so i had to but then gotcha please also if you're traveling as an international student and you don't know anybody try and make friends with your seat partner it was my seat partner that saved me because how was i going to be dragging three luggages and and and, and a backpack and hand luggage in that's like four luggages how was i going to do that so it was my sister partner that gave me one pound i don't know from anywhere she wasn't even speaking english but i was always smiling with her i was always nodding my head when she was saying her, her language and everything i even helped her when she needed like a little bit of help in the on the plane is it i wanted to say in the airport but yeah i i she was the one that gave me one pound and one thing i learned was if you and it's one thing i've actually realized here that if you have one pound, you can use it to rent a trolley. And when you pull back the trolley, you get your money back. In Nigeria, if we rent trolley, I bet you will get your money back. Ne? <laughs> but yeah, that was like my first culture shock. The second culture shock was the right-hand side driving. For people like us that were already driving in Nigeria. And you know, most times when we enter Ubers, we want to sit down in the, um, in the owner's side, Abi. If you sit down in the owner's side, there, you're sitting in the driver's side, though. So it was like a culture shock for me because I had to like, okay, it took a while for my brain to boot to that point that, okay, it's right hand side, you're like, you're no longer in Nigeria, but all that. But what's going on and everything? This leads me to my third culture shock. Guys, it was Benz that came to pick me. Uba Benz. Uba Benz. <laughs> Benz that came to pick me. That was like, this is the Benz that, even myself, I never buy Benz. <laughs> but yeah the fourth one is google map actually works google map was not designed for us in nigeria it was designed for people here nigeria to be well with you mm. i believe and i trust and i have faith that one day google map will work well for us but here google map was designed for people in a developed country like england to be honest because google map actually works so um google map has become my best friend in the past four weeks of being here because to be to be honest when i was in nigeria there was nothing like live view on my google map and 
it's going to lead me to i'm going to talk about three culture shocks in one which leads me to the bus system that actually works and god bless the person like adura says god bless the person that invented day rider because he is the person that i did not invent day riding ticket ha ah, international student for those so <laughs> so a day rider ticket is like five pounds so with that five pounds ticket you can enter as many buses as you want in a particular day from a particular time to a particular time like from morning to night basically so i can use that to enter like 10 buses it don't it don't matter where i'm going to here in manchester i can use that like the day rider ticket and everything but what i know is the google map and the bus is working and the land when the bus tells you oh 202 is coming i'm telling you if you look up you're saying 202 she I mean, your google map in nigeria is telling you that that phone is coming <laughs> But to be honest, I'm telling you, Google Map. And there was the live view. The live view was the one that shocked me. But it was Adura that showed me the live view. Let's then go for Adura. This is a picture of Adura here. But let's then go for You remember Adura from the last video, right? Yes, she's the one. <laughs> so um, she was the one that told me how the live view was. So basically, you pick the, your phone. And maybe I'll make a video on how exactly the live view was. But my friend in the US also did not even know that live view exists. Ah. You people are suffering Nigeria, but mm. so you pick your phone wherever you are, you click on the live view, and then you point your camera around the so I don't know how it works on a Android or anything, but then these arrows pop up. Can you see? It's, this arrow is like pop up and they lead you to where exactly you are going to. Like you cannot lose if you know maybe you don't know how to read map or, or you don't know how to follow directions, but it's very easy, and Google Map has been helping me, which leads me to what number is the distance if whatever number it is sha, you understand the next one see people obey traffic like you ah oh god ah nigeria my country it shall be well with you people obey traffic like you like they keep to their if it's red they will stop if it's and they they respect everybody they respect people that are driving bicycle i've not seen okada i've been seeing power bikes yes but okada ah. Ah, she's both. Ah! But yeah, they respect people that drive bicycles. They respect people that work. And then when there's a traffic light, right? But there's also the um, uh, there's not zebra crossing, but um, pedestrian. Is for people like us that now have car that want to cross, you understand? So once cross, you can press the button, and then the car is it turns red, a bit turns green for you to cross, and then you cross, and you get across to the other side. And cars are waiting. Nigerian drivers, it will be well with you. I'm not saying Nigerian drivers, but it will be well with us. It's coming to us to give people space on the road. Go ahead. But yeah, lead me to that one. And another point again, that I said this Google map and everything is connected together. Is There is no barricade on the road though. The people that are coming and going, they are using the same road. There is no barricade. But nobody is to overtake anybody. They have sense. Common sense. We tell them not to overtake anybody. Like... I'm like, ah, oh, Jesus, God, I need to unlearn some things. Too many, like, you just see what's wrong in your country. Like, what exactly is happening? But yeah, which leads me to another point again. Since I've arrived, I have not seen trailer that is carrying fuel. I've not seen trailer that is carrying I've not seen that on the road. I've not seen all these trailers that look like they want the Legos to remove on there. I'm like, God. What's up? And then they are transporting a whole lot. You see them with the vans. I think the only car, um, the only trailers. It's not even really a trailer. The one that transport the cars. But they are wait. We, they are the way they put it. You are not shocked that one car will fall down from the distance and jam your own car like the way it's doing in a final destination that everybody is to run away from. No, you are very sure that okay, these cars are fully secured. And to be honest, if you, it's very, it's very rare. It's on rare occasion that you see an accident. It's on rare occasions because everything is, and I'm to be honest, I've not seen potholes. I don't know a lot of people might might say they exist, but for me, since I got to Manchester, I have not seen potholes. I feel like the road is good enough compared coming from judging from where I am coming from to this place. Ah, the road is good enough. Like if you wear your white sneakers, you know, go there till you go wear them for like one month. You know, go wash them. You just be cleaning, cleaning. But the boy wear to wear your sneakers in Nigeria, you know, Africa. You will clean yourself. <laughs> oh, oh God. You will clean and you will wash and you will scrub. Because I've been here, but I said, I'm not cleaning it. I just carry it out in the morning and clean it and I'm going. <laughs> but yeah, it's been another culture shock for me. And I think another one um, based on the traffic again is 
in the buses you have to it's a contactless payment i'm going to go and get to that one but you pay for you pay contactless payment so you can have like a bus card like the i know nigeria the brt have like the carry card but sometimes they used to collect money from us but yeah the drivers yeah the drivers collect cash they collect coins they collect um so you just pay and it's not like bank is not working <laughs> bank is working guys it's not good it's not like the bank network is not going <laughs> The bank network used to go here. Is what are coming out of my head for you? The bank network used to go here. The bus system actually works. Like if you miss one bus and it bus tells you it's coming by nine and maybe it is being delayed, you will see it on your Google map that the bus is being delayed. Che if that full bus is not coming. <laughs> you push me, forgive me. I'm sorry. But see, it is well with us in Nigeria. All right. Um, next one is the train station actually works. The train station actually works. And they have something that they call a tram. I've not gotten on a tram before, but I'm hoping to get on a tram so I can record the experience for you guys. It's like a mini a mini train that moves in between the streets and everything. So it doesn't go long distances like the um like the trains, like the normal trains. They call it a tram. I've never gotten on it before. I don't even know how to get it, but hopefully I get on one soon and record the experience for you guys. Um yes, another one on transportation again. When you enter some Ubers, sometimes you have to use your seatbelt at the back. Yes, you have to use it. And if you are carrying a baby that has a car seat, you have to use the seatbelt on the baby. They take their security very seriously. And the boy that is both your entry on the Uber, the cars are on point, the cars are neat, the cars smell nice. It's not like sometimes some of the Ubers and the boats that you enter in Nigeria, you'll be like, what is this? You'll be like, God forbid. Oh, you are sure that this car you might have an accident. <laughs> See, I'm not bashing Nigeria, but to be honest, the culture shock is kind of like kind of like shocking to be honest like it's kind of like shocking but yeah okay so let's talk about another one number one um another um culture shock our schools don't have fence like once you cross the road like it's enter university of suffer you see that manchester university like this manchester university does not we don't even know i feel like that school is huge because the school is on different sides of the road like there is no fence like the way you see uni like you know and welcome to the university of uni like mm -mm. You're not saying it. We have um University of Suffolk just in front of the but there's no like fence that is surrounding the entire school that you know that okay, this is the University of Suffolk or University of Manchester and everything is literally on the road. They don't have school fence. Um Apple Wallet works here with ease. Like I feel like Apple Wallet was not designed for us in Nigeria because we don't do contactless payments in Nigeria. I don't think it has gotten to that part of the world here, but everything you can add your cards here and contactless payment. Another culture shock was when it was when I went to the bank to prove um, my proof of id when i wanted to open a bank account because um i think the system was overloaded and everything i did not spend up to five minutes proof of id there was the queue was moving you know when the queue is moving and it's very fast like okay proof of id done and everything and you're out of the bank sometimes i feel like some of the customer care representatives in banks they used to use us to play sudoku or solita or monopoly because they waste our time or maybe it's the network which leads me to another culture shock and this started from addis ababa when you get to the airport, the airport Wi-Fi is working. You don't have to be begging anybody for password. When I got to Addis Ababa, before I called my mom, I called my, my friends and everything, it was airport Wi-Fi because but there was no network now. I was coming from MTN, do you get? And then I got to Manchester, it was airport Wi-Fi. Please, what happened to Nigerians' airport Wi-Fi? Somebody has swallowed the money, Abi. Abi is this snake. It is well with us in Jesus' name. Another culture shock was church starts by 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. in some churches. Ah, seven a.m. What is that? I've been woke up by five a.m. because I want to beat traffic to meet workers meeting by seven a.m. My sister and my brother. It is what we are. But it was a culture shock I had to like really know. They know they rush for you. And two hours like this church service has finished. Everybody is going up. There's no like except if it's like a big church and it's their own building or something. They're like not renting and all. That's where you hear, oh, wait behind for this so 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 service or wait behind on this so 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 service. So church service here was a culture because my body is still trying to adjust to the time. I still had like a six a.m. alarm and I thought we were going to until I heard that church service was like ten a.m. Um, they have two taps in the washroom. One is either cold or one is hot. In the washroom, I, in the kitchen, like you can adjust it like the way we used to adjust, but they have like two taps and I'm like, uh-uh, what's going on? Why do we have two taps in the washroom and everything? 
and you have to pay for nylon bag everywhere you go you better carry your bag <laughs> like everybody carries their bag with pride nobody shame shame is it shameful yes it's shameful now nah. we're all shamelessly carrying our bag nobody no shame mm -mm. we carry the bag and everything or else you pay for bag or i think it's like 39 pence in audi but in african states that like one pound you will pay for your like, love bag that you get for free and they have an app for everything that you can use to accumulate points like god you will hear download this app download. but i like the point system because then you can see exactly how much you are earning and all and another culture shock for me was in my gym if i don't have to interact with anybody to pay like when i signed up for iFitness, i had to go in there and everything i signed up on the app and i enter with my pin scan my barcode enter to come out i scan my barcode and everything records my time that i've spent in the gym the work um, everything i have done if i if i've attended any gym classes in my own app like that was super amazing guys and there's nothing like overtaking yo everybody they stick to their lane there's nothing exactly like overtaking everybody sticks to their lane and everybody knows exactly that this is what they are doing but yeah if you're still watching i think i've gotten to the end of my culture so i didn't want to make this video long because this is like the fourth time i am recording this video but if you're watching please like this video don't forget to subscribe share with your friend please i'm actually begging because it creates it's, it's like a whole lot creating videos on youtube but i hope you found this video helpful because it's still shocking i think that if i ever have like any extra culture shock i would definitely let you guys know I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and I'll see you guys in my next video.